Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a supernatural horror film, Malignant. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. In fear a woman finds the walls around her starting to twist, and she suddenly enters another dimension. She sees a killer in black as violently attacking an old lady, beating her to death. The woman is so scared that she screams out loud. While she is screaming, she returns to reality in a blink. What just happened however, was not a dream. A few days later, the same weird thing happens again. This time the woman finds herself in somebody else's house. This time she witnesses the mysterious killer murdering a man in bed. When she wakes up, she calls the police, and leads them to the house where the murder happened. They do find a dead body on the bed. Is the woman haunted by a devil? Or does she have psychic powers? The whole story starts when the woman is pregnant. The woman is called Madison. This is her fourth pregnancy. The previous three pregnancies ended in unexplained miscarriages. One day before Madison goes to work, she turns off the TV, while her husband is watching a football match. Her husband is not happy about this, and they have an argument. Madison asks her husband to stop drinking, which angers him. During the argument, Madison's husband pushes her and smashes her head heavily against a wall. Seeing Madison collapse in pain, he runs to the kitchen to get an ice bag for her. Madison locks the door as soon as he is out of the room. Madison cries and realizes her head is bleeding. That night Madison's husband is sleeping on the sofa downstairs. He is awakened by a strange noise. He follows the noise to the kitchen, and sees the smoothie maker is working. He turns it off and sees that the fridge door opens itself. He finds it weird. Suddenly, he hears that the TV is on. He runs to the living room, and finds a dark shadow sitting on the sofa. The moment the TV turns off, he turns on the light, the shadow is gone. He looks around, suddenly the shadow appears closely behind him, and attacks him unexpectedly. Madison wakes up from her dream. Her pillow is wet with the blood from the back of her head. She goes downstairs, and sees that her husband is dead. It appears he died in a gruesome way. The dark shadow appears again. Madison is terrified. She runs back upstairs and hides in the room. The shadow follows her and bursts the door open. Madison is hit by the door and passes out. Later a police officer comes to Madison's house. At first, he thought it was just a normal case. But when he sees Madison's husband's body, he is shocked. The next day, Madison wakes up in a hospital. Her sister Sydney is keeping her company. Her sister tells her that, unfortunately, the baby did not survive. Madison is heartbroken. The loss of her husband and the baby is a great blow to her. The officer visits Madison in the hospital. He needs to ask her some questions. But considering Madison's current state, the officer postpones the interview. During the investigation, the officer learns from Madison's neighbor that Madison's husband was abusive. There was no evidence of forced entry that night. It appears that Madison has the motive. Two weeks later, Madison has recovered and moves back home. Something weird happens during the first night. Looking out from the window, Madison sees the street light flashing. Looks like somebody is standing beneath the light. Madison worries that the killer may break into the house again. She closes all the curtains and doors. However, there is something wrong with one door which won't shut properly. Every time Madison closes it, it will open by itself. Madison wonders if the house is haunted by a ghost. Madison runs to the bedroom out of fear. She is sleepless the whole night. The second day Madison installs a bolt on every door in the house. Her sister comes to visit her, but cannot open the door. She goes to the other side of the house, and gets Madison's attention, who is standing in the room in a trance. Madison's sister gets into the house, and asks about the crack on the wall which Madison is staring at. Madison tells her sister that her husband did that when he smashed her head against the wall. Sadness and loneliness surround Madison. She longs for her family's company. Then Madison reveals to her sister that she was adopted when she was eight years old, which surprises her sister. Meanwhile, a tourist guide is just finishing her work. When she is about to leave, she hears some sound coming from the dark tunnel behind her. She walks into the tunnel, and asks if anyone is there. But there is no response. When she turns around, she hears the sound again. She is scared and hurries to turn on the light. She can hear the sound coming after her. The moment the light is on, the sound disappears, and there is nobody in the tunnel. Suddenly, a monster-like shadow jumps to her from the ceiling. When she wakes up, she finds herself tied in a small attic with her mouth sealed with tapes. The shadow is right beside her. And then a tape recorder starts to play a recording, saying that Dr. Weaver is his first target. 
the shadow takes out the tourist guide's phone and calls the doctor. The shadow just says one sentence, that it is time to cut out the cancer, and then hangs up the phone. That's what the doctor said years ago. The doctor takes out a medical record and begins to recall something. Many years ago, she received a patient called Gabriel, who is violent and extremely strong, as if he is possessed by a demon. One day, Gabriel turned crazy and killed several doctors and nurses. In the end, Dr. Weaver brought Gabriel under control with an anesthetic rifle. She said those words and decided to end it. Dr. Weaver cannot help, but wonder if Gabriel has come back. One day, Madison is cleaning the house. Suddenly the lights are flashing. She feels a sharp pain at the back of head, and her ears are buzzing. She wipes her hair with a towel. While she is putting the towel into the washing machine, Dr. Weaver's face suddenly appears on the door of the washing machine. Madison is in shock, she can't move at all. Strange things happen in an instance. The surrounding begins to transform into another room. The next minute, Madison finds herself in Dr. Weaver's home. She witnesses the whole process of Dr. Weaver being murdered. Madison begins to scream, and returns to her reality. What happened is real. The police officer quickly starts an investigation at the crime scene. The officer notices the medical record on the floor that Dr. Weaver took out. The police also notice that the rest of that murder weapon is missing. It turns out that the weapon was taken back by the shadow. The tourist guide is scared when she sees that the shadow comes back and struggles to get loose. The shadow threatens her with the weapon, demanding she behaves. Knowing that her vision is actually real, Madison is terrified and thinks she may have the ability to foresee other people's deaths. Soon the shadow has his eyes on the second target, who is a middle-aged man. It is raining hard. The man sees the windows are open, so he goes to close them. He notices there is a pool of water on the floor, and the watermarks lead to the cloakroom. Although he is a bit scared, he goes to the cloakroom to check it out. It is just a false alarm. There is nobody. However, when he comes back to the window, a shadow appears behind him, and he is unaware. When everything is sorted, he goes to bed. In the meantime, Madison is also sleeping in bed. But when she turns around, she sees the man lying right next to her. What's more disturbing, the shadow crosses over her and stabs the man to death in front of her face. Madison wakes up screaming again. To prove that her vision is real, Madison loses no time in going to the police station and explaining everything to the officer. But it seems the police don't buy her dream they don't believe Madison has psychic powers. Madison's sister helps to testify that what Madison said is true. Madison saw Dr. Weaver die as it happened. Now she has seen this man being killed. It might be worthwhile to go and have a look. The officer is persuaded. So they decide to go to the place where Madison saw the murder. The police officers and Madison get out of the car in front of an apartment building. As they ponder how to locate the right apartment, Madison quickly uses her ability to recall the apartment number they knock at the door, which is unlocked. They walk into the room and see that the man died in his bed as Madison had described. When they return to the police station, Madison gives them a portrait of the shadow, the demon Gabriel. During the break, Madison goes to the toilet. The lights start to flash. Then she receives an unknown call. Madison picks it up. To her surprise, the person calls out Madison's birth name Emily. Madison insists that her name is not Emily. Suddenly, Madison realizes it is Gabrielle who is calling her. Madison is scared and leaves the police station with her sister quickly. On their way to their birthplace, Madison tells her sister that she has known Gabriel since she was a child. She knew him from before she could remember. To recall more about him, she goes to her mother for help. When the name Gabriel is mentioned, Madison's mother is astonished. The dust-laden memory is open when Madison's mother plays a video recording of Madison's ninth birthday. In the video, Madison's parents prepared a birthday cake for her. But the young Madison was not interested. She turned her head and talked to the air. Her parents were concerned and asked who she was talking to. She said it was Gabriel. Later, Gabriel called Madison through a toy phone, saying that he was going to hurt the baby in her mother's belly. The conversations Madison had with Gabriel scared her parents. But they thought Gabriel was created by Madison so that she could survive her miserable childhood before she was adopted. Meanwhile, at the police station, the officer has made progress in the investigation. The officer finds some USB sticks in the medical record in Dr. Weaver's house, in which Dr. Weaver stored Emily's treatment notes. Dr. Weaver recorded that Emily was seeing visions and hearing thoughts from the devil. 
Emily also had signs of mental psychosis. There were three doctors involved in Emily's treatment. Two of them died recently. The officer realizes the doctor's deaths might be related to Madison's case, and has a feeling that something may happen to the third doctor. So he finds out where the third doctor leaves. While the officer is looking for the third doctor, Madison has a vision again in the bathroom at home. She sees the third doctor in the mirror. The next minute, she is in the doctor's house. When the officer arrives at the doctor's house, he finds the doctor dead in the bathtub. The officer can't believe his eyes. Madison notices Gabriel is still in the room. He is hiding at the top of the door. Gabriel jumps at the officer and attacks him with a knife. Luckily, the officer avoids it and shoots back. Gabriel breaks the window and jumps down the building in a weird way. The officer chases after him. Though the officer falls from a high and injures himself, he still chases after Gabriel to a basement. Gabriel is quick. When the officer gets into the basement, Gabriel has hidden away in a room. The officer checks the room with a torch carefully. Suddenly, Gabriel jumps down from a car and attacks the officer. The two fight fiercely. Just when the officer pulls out the gun and shoots at Gabriel, Gabriel climbs up the wall nimbly like a ghost and escapes away, leaving the officer astonished. At this point, all the evidence lead to Madison or Emily, because when she was young, she received treatment from the three recently murdered doctors. But Madison can't remember anything that happened before she was eight. With the help of a psychiatric hypnotherapist, Madison starts to retrieve those memories. Gabriel followed her to her new family. One day Emily was going to cut the cake and share it with her parents. Gabriel wanted her to kill the unborn baby with a knife. Emily stopped herself before doing it. Madison is frightened by the memory and screams. The psychiatric hypnotherapist wakes her up and calms her down. The officer finds it hard to believe when Madison tells him that Gabriel is the serial killer because Gabriel is just an imaginary friend. Suddenly, the tourist guide, who was kidnapped by the killer, falls down from the roof when she is trying to escape and lands in front of Madison and other people. Later, the police find the weapon and the jacket that belonged to the killer in the attic. Now the police believe Madison is the killer and arrest her. Madison keeps explaining that she is not the killer, but she can't tell them why the tourist guide was in her house. Seeing the police not believe her, Madison gets mad and screams. The lights in the room all explode at the same time, and they receive a call from Gabriel. Gabriel says that he is responsible, and Madison has nothing to do with it. What's more, Gabriel is the devil that Madison saw. In order to help Madison, Madison's sister drives to the now abandoned hospital to gather more information. When she arrives, it is late and dark. She finds Madison's record in the archives. From the recordings, Madison's sister learns that the tourist guide is Madison's biological mother, who abandoned Madison when she was very young. Gabriel is actually Emily's parasitic twin brother and is an extreme version of a teratoma, a tumor consisting of tissues, hair, teeth, muscles, and bones. Gabriel lives within Emily's body and affects her in some way. That's why Emily had hallucinations. Gabriel even tried to hijack her body. All the murders were done by Gabriel, who controlled Madison's body. In the meantime, Madison is teased by fellow inmates in prison. Madison gets angry and has a conflict with one of them. Other inmates join the fight. Madison gets beaten up, which provokes Gabriel. Gabriel then takes control of Madison's body and kills all the inmates. After that, Gabriel grabs the keys from the prison officers and runs away. Madison's sister tells the truth to the officer. When the officer gets to the police office, Gabriel has put on his outfit and is going to leave there. Gabriel cruelly kills all the police who are stopping him from escaping. The officer cries out for Madison's name. Madison wakes up for a moment. But very soon, Gabriel takes control over her again. Gabriel leaves the police office and goes straight to the hospital. He kills a security guard and attacks Madison's sister. The tourist guide, who is also Gabriel's mother, shows her regret of abandoning him. Right then, the officer arrives in time and shoots Gabriel. Gabriel throws a weapon at the officer and injures him. Madison's sister picks up the gun and wants to save her sister. Gabriel throws a bed at Madison's sister and pins her to the wall. Madison can't do anything but watch her sister being killed. When Gabriel is going to his mother, Madison wakes up and takes back control of her body. Madison tricks Gabriel into believing that he killed Madison's sister. He then takes Gabriel and herself to a black mindscape. Madison uses her strong will to lock Gabriel in a dark room. Madison, who now gets full control of her own body, lifts the bed and saves her sister. 
Madison embraces her sister and mother happily. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.